Hudson County View, live at Uncut, and I'm your host, John R. with the R, stands for Rated R Superstar Highness. And of course, we have the latest and greatest in Hudson County news, as we do every week. So first of all, as I'm sure you're all well aware, uh, we reported last week, exactly one week ago, that State Senator Sandra Cunningham was charged with driving while intoxicated after sideswiping two cars in Jersey City. So we don't have a ton of new information there, to be quite candid with you, but we are going to discuss what happened there. And we're also going to have a conversation about the Hudson County Democratic Organization line. Obviously, this is something that comes up every election cycle, but this is particularly interesting because we saw that falling out that I spoke about in depth last week between Mayor Jimmy Davis and Assemblyman Nick Travolati, who happens to also be the Assembly Whip, uh, which is a fairly important position, of course, in the state legislature. So we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to discuss what that has to do with last night's Jersey City Council meeting where Ward E. Councilman James Solomon introduced a resolution about fair elections and getting rid of the HCDO line in primary and general elections. Now that actually passed by a vote tally that I've never seen before and we're, go uh, we're going to talk more in depth about that with my guest today, Amy Torres of the Hudson County Progressive Alliance who will be joining us remotely right after this commercial break. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's saving, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Not everyone celebrates the birth of a baby. You have options. Don't panic. New Jersey has safe havens for unwanted infants. Leave the baby with staff at any hospital, ER, police or fire station, or rescue squad. Call the number on your screen for safe haven locations or go to www.njsafehaven.org. No shame, no blame, no names. Safe Haven. Hudson County View, live at Uncut. I'm your host, John R. Heides, and as I just mentioned a few moments ago, I'm joined today remotely by one of the leaders of the Hudson County Progressive Alliance, Amy Torres. Amy, thanks so much for uh, jumping in on short notice. Really appreciate it. Of course. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. All right, awesome. So obviously we have a lot to talk about uh, when it comes to the HCDO line and the county committee, but um, you know, let's start with the first things first. So talk to me a little bit about the Hudson County Progressive Alliance and recruiting county committee members to run in the June 8th primary. So tell me why you wanted to spearhead this and why you think this is important for uh, municipal government here in Hudson County. Yeah, thanks, John. I'm happy to talk about our work. You know, I think when I think about what Hudson County Progressive Alliance does, um, it's really a question of what our current political leadership doesn't do. Hudson County Progressive Alliance makes sure that we turn up at um, public meetings, whether it's for city council hearings, whether it's for county commissioner hearings, and talk about issues that impact real people in real communities. Um, we also make sure that people are supported, supported through voter registration efforts. We were active in the census over the summer um, and really making sure that everyday people are engaged in the political process. And to that end, we recruit and encourage people to run for county committee. Often when we start these conversations, people say things like, what the heck is county committee? Um, and that in and of itself is a real testament to the work that is uh, left undone from some people in political leadership. And we really build this effort to both build public education and public empowerment to understand what the role of committee is and what it could do if we get the right people in office willing to fight for change. So we do that through a few different ways. We have open trainings. This year we've really pivoted hard into doing We'll talk through with you, you know, what committee members are supposed to do, what their existing responsibilities are, and what the vision for change looks like. We also give you hands-on tools so that you can immediately, 
immediately leave a training and go straight to your neighbors and start petitioning for signatures to get on the ballot. Um, we have folks that have run before. We've had folks that have run before and felt so empowered by the process that they're now running for higher office. So we're really excited to be doing this work alongside so many enthusiastic members of the community but it's also because of an environment of extreme disappointment for all of the things that you mentioned at the top of the segment. There's a big hill to climb, but we know there are a lot of folks that uh, are ready to climb it. All right, extraordinary. So now look, uh, obviously, I know you and other activists have been talking about getting rid of the line across New Jersey, really not just in Hudson, for the better part of the past year at least. And of course, there's a court filing in federal court. We don't know how that's going to go. But the bottom line is this. Uh, recently, uh, you know, really actually as recent as just a couple days ago, Mayor Davis selected William Sampson IV to replace Nick Travolati, uh, obviously we know as the assembly whip. And he's been the representative since, uh, well, three terms, so since 2015. Now, Obviously, that's drawn uh, a lot of uh, criticism, and a lot of people are saying this is time to actually get into the 21st century and make changes, uh, which kind of leads us into last night, but let's just touch on that first. Yeah, look, John, you know, I think um, people have made the argument very reductive to say that it's only progressives or it's only a certain type of people in the electorate that care about the line. But what is really, um, I think what happened last week is really a testament to how much things need to change, whether it's for progressive voices, whether it's for liberal voices, whether it's for more centrist voices, even the majority whip is not safe from the process um, that currently determines who ends up in power and who stays in power. This is not just a progressive issue. This brings New Jersey up in line to the rest of the 49 states in the nation and there's still so much more work to go but right now we're last right new jersey is last in how our democracy functions new jersey is last in how we bring new voices to the table even though new jersey is first in so many other ways one of the most diverse states in the nation hudson county one of the most diverse uh, the most diverse county in the state one of the most diverse in the nation as well. So really there's a responsibility from our political leadership to bring in these voices. If we can't do it in the Democratic Party in Hudson County, the Democratic Party nationally won't be able to do it. So the responsibility really starts here. As you mentioned, there's multiple fronts to the fight. People can do it at the local level. There is a state lawsuit that's happening. And people can do it at the hyper local level by running for committee also. So now, if I'm not mistaken, there's 908 county committee seats. Is that right? So, you know, it's, yes. it's, a pretty, it's a pretty heavy lift, I think it's fair to say. So how do you think your chances are heading into that primary, you know, a few months out? We're just a couple weeks from the filing deadline. Well, look, it's 908 is a lot, right? Um, but yes. there's also a lot of discontent in the status quo. You don't need to be tuning into local politics every day to know something is wrong. You know that when you see your rent increasing higher than the cost of your, your uh, salary and that cost of living is running up higher than you could ever possibly afford. You know that when you see new developments dropping in your neighborhood and long-term uh, community members and neighbors moving out. You don't need to be tuned into insider politics to know that something is fundamentally wrong and there's plenty more than 908 people across the county who can recognize that. Um, so it's a long one. It's not just about this election cycle. It's not just about the next election cycle. It's about building this civic literacy so that people are better, better able to participate in their politics. It's not just running about uh, running for committee. It's also turning up to speak at public hearings. It's also making sure that you're participating and get out the vote efforts, even if your committee person is not. Um, so there are many ways to plug in. There's no singular solution. Um, and we're happy to support all of them and, uh, you know, be a player in the fight. Very good, Amy. So we're going to talk more about this. We're just going to take a quick word from our sponsors, though. We'll be right back. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com 
Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Good Friends Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good friend self storage. Let us be your good friend. Hudson County View, live at Uncut. John Arheitis and I'm still here with AB Torres of the Hudson County Progressive Alliance. So, uh, AB, very good timing now. We can jump into what happened yesterday at the council meeting. So, as you may know, and others watching may know, I've been covering Hudson County for a better part of the last decade. And before that, I was in Patterson. So, I've seen a lot of interesting things, I believe. And uh, what I would think that I've never seen, though, until last night, was a resolution clearing by a vote of 204. And that was, uh, again, as I said at the top of the program, Councilman Solomon's resolution about fair elections and getting rid of the party line. So I know you and others uh, from your group had a lot to say about this. So just tell me about uh, the meeting from your perspective and the final outcome. Yeah, um, you know, the, the vote tally was um, one for the history books, I think. Um, readers and watchers of Hudson County View probably remember that uh, the last time that we ridiculed uh, votes that passed with <laughs> or votes that passed with two people it was at the, in the other direction, right? It's normally seven two votes that are the ones that uh, make the news. But um, last night, I think, you know, it was a really a culmination of a lot of different things. When we talk about these seven two votes, for example, or at the, the county level, um, the six three votes that happen, it's almost regardless of the issue, it's really predictable to understand how things are going to go. So whether you call someone's office or not, you kind of can guess what their position is going to be based on which political faction they're aligned with. Um, and what was really interesting yesterday is we saw this resolution, which is talking about political factions, talking about the way that they manifest themselves on the ballot and um, through the endorsement process. And yet that was the vote where you saw things look completely different. You know, we, we didn't have the 7-2. We had multiple absences, multiple abstentions. Um, so I think it highlights a, a few things is one, it's really hard for people to go on record about this, right? They know they're gonna get slammed by the media. They know they're gonna get slammed by the public. Um, and yet if they oppose it, they know they're gonna get slammed by their <laughs> political counterparts, right? And the other folks that are uh, sort of pulling the strings. So, um, you know, the number one rule of trying to mitigate a fire is, is not to bring oxygen into the room. And I think that's a little bit of what we saw last night or multiple absences and abstentions. And of course it's, you know, also a busy time of year. There's regularly absences in council, but I think that was a pretty, um, stark and surprising vote. I think the resolution itself, you know, I want to commend Council Member Solomon for putting it together. And it's really a culmination of several conversations about the line and um, the news from last week is uh, really was the impetus for putting it together alongside with a letter that many advocates and community leaders wrote um, to County Chair DeGees, who's also running for council herself um, and the JCDC chair around this issue that came out of LD31, um, but also just around making the party more inclusive overall. So we were advocating for a lift to the binary gender cap um, so that people who are non-binary or gender expansive are able to run for county committee um, or for queer couples that they're able to run for county committee together or that two women can run in a county commission county committee district together um, and so it was both advocating for a lift to that binary cap 
Um, but we know that that solution in and of itself is not enough unless there's a huge culture change in how the party governs itself. Um, so also fighting for an open convention to make sure that one, we're eliminating these ballot lines, but two, we're also eliminating this endorsement process that drives all of the money and resources and manpower that go into races far in advance of the primary or far in advance of the ballot even being drawn. Um, so I'm, I'm thrilled for uh, Council Member Solomon and for the movement. There's no shortage of folks that have been tuning into this conversation, not just here in Hudson County, but across the state. Um, and we should really celebrate wins as they happen um, and use it as that opportunity to build public education um, and build more momentum and enthusiasm for change. All right, well, point taken. So a final point here. So first of all, you haven't heard back from Chair DeGees or Chair Stamato, correct? I haven't. Um, so, you know, maybe you have your next week's guest queued up. Perhaps, we'll um, see if we're that fortunate. But, uh, you know, I know, I know we're short on time, but I know we are as well. So let me just also ask, look, Realistically, it seems unlikely that there, anything's going to happen to the line before June and November. It's probably not going to be 2021, right? So how long of a haul do you think this is ultimately? All I ask is that for existing committee members um, and, you know, for folks, well, one is for folks that are thinking about running, now's the time. It's easy to do. If you know your neighbors, if you are watching this show, you're already a person who would be good for county committee. If you if you care about local politics, that's all the qualification that you need. I think the second thing that I'll say is that if you're on county committee um, and you paid attention to last night's vote, I want you to think about that 5 a.m. on election day when you're asked to turn out for candidates on a slate and run around to all of the poll sites delivering coffee and giving out flyers because Two people on the council had your back last night. Two people on the council were fighting for change. The rest of them couldn't be bothered, uh, couldn't show up. Um, and so you're gonna be asked to work for them. You're gonna be asked to put in the effort to whip the voters in your precinct for them. And you should keep that in mind. Amy, thanks again. We really appreciate you. The best of luck. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not done yet. We're gonna take another break. We'll be right back. Can I get the laptop? Cutting edge surgical care is right here in Secaucus. <clears throat> Robotic <laughs> surgery <laughs> is safer. Did you guys do it? Shorter hospital stays. <laughs> Smaller abdominal incisions. Yeah, easy. The size of an M&M. Well, here. Yeah. Here at Hudson Regional, we provide world-class robotic surgical care. Stevens Jersey City Ford, located right off of NJ 440 North. Across the Hudson we'll Mall is your one stop for all your yeah, automotive we'll probably needs. Go Check out Ford's to... latest models like the 2020 Ford Fusion with I, its I stylish know. looks and hybrid Let's options, see. or the unparalleled high performance 2020 Ford Mustang. The 2020 Ford F-150 Raptor is ready for those rugged off-road terrains with trail control. Need a mid-sized truck for your towing and hauling? The 2020 Ford Ranger will deliver. The 2020 Ford Escape is a luxury SUV that was made for comfort and adventure on the go. Returning is Ford's legendary Bronco, which takes you back to the true meaning of off-roading. They are now available for pre-order in our showroom or on our website. Let us help you find your next vehicle. Stevens, Jersey City Ford, 201-432-7272. Hudson County View, live at Uncut, shout our highness. So as I said at the top of the program, still a couple news items that I wanted to touch on before we let you go for this week. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about State Senator Cunningham. As uh, everybody watching is probably well aware, one week ago she was charged with DWI, as I mentioned, of course, at the top of the program too. So we wrote about this uh, last Thursday evening. And uh, since then, we got out a copy of the motor vehicle accident report. Uh, I can't tell you a whole lot. I mean, it's a very brief report, just a couple sentences here and there. But the accident occurred at 250 Culver Avenue and the deputy majority leader of the state Senate Democrats had a blood sample taken for an alcohol test. This was apparently a blood test that was done at the Jersey City Medical Center. So I was coming down the street when I was about to make a turn and instead turned into a snowbag, she told police, despite sideswiping two legally parked cars, according to their report. As a result, 
She was charged with driving while intoxicated and placed under arrest. And as has been widely reported, she was charged with a DWI back in 2005 after uh, driving in the area of Liberty State Park. So not really a heck of a lot else to tell you. I mean, we've, uh, we saw Governor Phil Murphy asked about that on Friday at a vaccination event in Union City, and he said no reaction other than she is in my prayers. Um, she's been a state senator since 2007. She currently has no opponent in the June 8th primary election. That seems unlikely to change at this point, frankly. And uh, other than that, you know, everything else remains uh, a bit up in the air. I mean, I've made a public records request seeking the dash camera uh, from this event, the body camera. We haven't heard back yet. Uh, of course, it is an ongoing investigation that looks like the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office is handling. So it's probably going to be a little while before we hear much else. Uh, but, you know, it's just really interesting that this should uh, happen. Well, th in the midst of this whole LD31 chaos, drama, whatever you want to call it, with, uh, again, Bay Mayor Jimmy Davis and Nick Shrabalati, uh, you know, no word yet on uh, if the assemblyman will be running off the line, but he did have a fundraiser on Monday. And uh, back to Senator Cunningham, she does have a fundraiser planned next week, so it looks like her and her team will be moving full speed ahead despite this setback. Uh, so, you know, I guess that's really all I could tell you at this point. We're certainly going to keep an eye on it. Certainly, we're grateful that everybody walked away okay. No injuries reported, no serious injuries whatsoever. So with that, we're going to just move on to a, a totally different topic. Talk to you a little bit about what is the American Rescue Plan, a uh, COVID relief plan that's $1.9 trillion, that's with a T. Uh, that, what does that mean here in New Jersey and specifically Hudson County? Well. According to U.S. Senators Bob Menendez and Cory Booker, we're talking about $424.6 million in relief. And uh, that's $130.41 million allocated to the county government and $294,204,802.61, can't forget the 61 cents, go into those 12 municipalities here in Hudson. So let's just uh, look a little bit about what's going on here. The final funding formula, which that's $10.189 billion for New Jersey, billion with a B, targets federal resources to areas with the greatest need and is modeled after Menendez's bipartisan SMART Act, which was co-sponsored by Booker. That was in hopes of uh, providing local relief to municipalities. So. According to the senators, this allowed the Garden State to receive about $1 billion more than they would have if the money had been distributed by population. Now, uh, Menendez, in a joint statement, said, Our state and local governments have been on the front lines of the fight against COVID-19. They have been bleeding resources for over a year, while costs have soared and revenues have plummeted. As a result, they have borne the brunt of the economic pain and desperately need help. Now, we also, uh, again, heard from Booker. And he said, with state and local governments across our country facing the painful decisions of potentially laying off thousands of police officers, firefighters, teachers, and other essential workers, and cutting essential services, the full support of our federal government has never been more important to fight this pandemic. So, uh, you know, it's pretty clear where the Democrats uh, stood on this issue. You know, this was something that came before the House a couple weeks ago. It passed, but it was then amended. So... Uh, before a vote in the Senate, and then it went back to the House. And, uh, you know, they were all pretty close votes, but, you know, it appears to be in the rear view now. And it looks like, obviously, good news for Hudson County and New Jersey. So I'm just going to, I don't want to read the numbers in detail because there's a lot of decimal points here, but I just want to give you the broad figures for all the towns, municipalities. Bayonne, 39 million. East Newark, 255,000. Guttenberg, uh, about 1.1 million. Harrison, uh, nearly 2 million. Hoboken, 27.2 million. Jersey City, 145.8 million. Cardi, uh, 4 billion, about 4 million. North Bergen, 17.75 million. Secaucus, 2.1 million. Union City, 26.4 million. Weehawken, 1.4 million. And West New York is 26.8 million. So, with that, we're going to take one more commercial break and we'll be right back before we close out our show. Pen and Pencil Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. 
At Hudson Regional Hospital, we promise to be prepared for your emergency. We promise to provide world-class robotic surgical care. We promise to treat you like family. To provide accurate diagnostic care. To provide the most innovative orthopedic care at your doorsteps. We promise to treat your baby like our own. To never stop investing in the best of spinal care. To be with you every step of the way. Here at Hudson Regional Hospital, we promise to take care of our community. Hudson County View, live at Uncut, John Our Highness. So I'm sure uh, my North Hudson viewers and readers know that last week, West New York Mayor Gabriel Rodriguez made a, a broad appeal to anybody that would listen that they need more vaccines. He said at that point, just 2.2 to 2.7% of his municipality's population had been vaccinated and they needed a, they needed a helping hand. And uh, the following day, coincidentally, we heard that from county officials that there would be Johnson & Johnson vaccines and as well as uh, other two-dose vaccines coming to the Palisade Medical Center. And uh, there was 1,500 J&J &J vaccines and, the, and there was, the majority of those were going to North Hudson, not West New York specifically, but North Hudson. So with that in mind, it looked like that was going to be the end of that chapter. But as uh, luck would have it, that wasn't the case. We heard from uh, North Hudson Community Action Corporation CEO Joan Quigley, a former assemblywoman, and she appeared to be pretty annoyed, uh, frankly, in that email sent to Hudson County mayors on Friday. She did not like uh, the choice of language from the mayor on this one, and uh, I've got to explain to you exactly what I'm talking about. So. She said, we thank you for your outstanding cooperation with our policy of allotting vaccination slots to the municipalities we serve according to the population of each community. Under that arrangement, West New York, being the third largest town in our service area, receives 18% of the time slots available. Therefore, when we saw and read media reports of West New York being shortchanged on vaccines, our chairman, board members, senior management, and vax teams were deeply offended by the inaccurate information presented to the public. So she is stating that the data compiled, figures compiled by the North Hudson Community Action Corporation that West New York received 1,034 of the 2,851 vaccinations they were responsible for in the five North Hudson municipalities between December 22nd and March 1st, and that's a little over 36%. On top of that, uh, we also heard her mention that the North Hudson Community Action Corp tested 53,942 people for the coronavirus at a Union City site on 36th Street. And uh, while that closed recently, we saw 13,020 or little, around 24% going towards West New York residents. And uh, the response from the mayor, I thought, was kind of interesting. Didn't acknowledge anything from North Hudson Community Action Corp, but said he's standing by his plea for more vaccines and also thanked the Palisades Medical Center. He said, I'm thankful to all the entities that have been working with our municipality thus far, including Palisades Medical Center, which has been in integral in vaccinating our most vulnerable senior and high-risk population. At this point, my main concern continues to be the health and safety of all our residents, frontline workers, and educators, and I will continue to fight, fighting to get more vaccinations to matter the source. So, finally, uh, just briefly here, we saw the county prosecutor Association of New Jersey asked Governor Phil Murphy to veto a mandatory minimums bill. The reason this is relevant to Hudson, in case you haven't been following this one closely, it was sponsored in the lower house by Assemblyman Nick Stravelotti, in the upper house by State Senator Nick Sacco. This is a bill that would take some power away from prosecutors and give it to the judges because it would be the judge's discretion in crimes like drug possession, uh, also burglary and official misconduct, as opposed to having the five-year mandatory minimum, for example, in the case of official misconduct. So just quickly, uh, Prosecutor Esther Suarez was the one who wrote the letter because she's the president of the association. And she says the minimum mandatory sentences of the added crimes are a key deterrent to entrusted public officials and employees for violating their sworn duty. Governor Phil Murphy has taken no formal action on the bill at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. As always, we really appreciate you. We'll see you next week.